Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go through the spinal gateways. The first thing that's really important to me in spinal flow is understanding your body and knowing that your body talks to you all the time. So right now, let's close our eyes and let's take a minute just to really connect in to listen to our body. Our bodies speak to us all the time with sensation. It could be pain, it could be tingling, it could be numbness, but all the times our body is trying to tell us a message to say, hey, listen to me. So it's really, really important to spend that time and really hear and say, what is my body saying? Do I have pain? Do I have tension? Do I have headaches? Do I have numbness? Do I have digestive issues? What's happening inside my body and what is my body telling me? So one of the most important things that you can do to further understand your body is do a body scan and ask, what's my body saying? And what I want to do now is I want to help you look at where it's located and the cause of the pain, tension and stress in your body. So you can open your eyes now and know that if your body is speaking to you, if you have pain, stress, tension, disease, illness, then there's possibly an interference happening in your nervous system. For your, ba your, for your body to speak to you with knee pain, with back pain, with shoulder pain, with headaches, the nerves are saying, hey, I'm not okay. So what I want to help go through now is to understand what happens with the nervous system. How does the nervous system work? What are the seven gateways and how you can further understand your body? So if we start and look at the nervous system, you can start here with the brain. This is the brain up here. The brain sends a spinal cord that comes all the way down here and every nerve comes out of this spinal cord to supply the organ cells and tissues of your body. What happens is right at the bottom here of your coccyx, that's when your spinal cord ends. So this is essentially a continuation of the brain. You can call it the spinal cord, you can call it the brainal cord, it's one organ. So when you're trying to understand what your body's saying and you say, hey, I've got a problem here, I've got a problem here, we can start to really have a look at go, you know what, we are connected. We've got one central nervous system that coordinates every part of our body. So I want to go through now so you can understand more about your central nervous system so you get an idea of what's happening in your body. So if we come right down to the base gateway down the bottom, let's put our hands on our base gateway, it's a tail. This is our tail. So this is the base gateway which is the tail. And when there's a blockage in the base gateway, remember this is the last place where the nerves come. The nerves come and they attach through here from your brain. When there's a blockage in this, it indicates to me that your body's in fight flight. Base gateway goes under, it's like your tail. No different to a dog. When you see a dog and their tail bones under, they're in fight flight. When their tail bones open, they're happy. Same with us. When our tailbone's tucked under, we're in fight flight. How we get into fight flight is an accumulation of stress. The stresses in our life, the physical, the chemical, and the emotional stressors in our life that have been stored in our body and weren't able to be processed and released, store in our body and they make us go into fight flight. It's no different to when a tiger comes into the room and the tiger comes into the room and the body senses there's a fear there, there's danger. The body, the incredible process of the body says, you know what, I'm going to hold myself together so I can run really fast. What happens is the tailbone comes under. When the tailbone comes under, it stretches the whole spinal column to lock it into place. The reason it does that is to keep you safe. It wants to keep you safe from preventing further damage to the important organs like the brain and the heart. So it's doing that, which is a really, really smart mechanism. At the same time, while it's holding into a new place, we can't digest, we can't reproduce, we don't get to breathe properly and we don't get to heal because we're getting busy to run. Makes sense, yeah? So what happens then is that's a really smart response from the body. We start to run. We run, we move away, and the body senses that the stress is no longer there, 
the tiger's not there anymore, and the body comes out of fight flight, out of the sympathetic nerve system into the parasympathetic rest digest. And then what happens is the body starts to move again. There's freedom in the spine, we start to breathe, we start to digest, and we can start to heal again because the stress is no longer there. What happens with many of you that have pain and symptoms and disease and illness and digestive issues and hormonal issues is what's happening is that that stress in your life that caused it has been there for some time. For some people, it's been there for a day, a month, a year, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and the body is saying, you know what? I'm holding you together. I'm keeping you in fight flight because there's stress in your life. Your body is incredible and it's protecting you. This is a really smart, incredible process of the body. The body has no idea between the difference of a tiger and the difference between your emotional stress, your financial stress, the stress, the food that you're eating that's toxic in your body. The body just senses all... There's something unsafe. And it says, you know what? I know what to do with this. I'm going to hold you in place and lock it into a fight flight. Smart, yeah? With that, your body's protecting you. It's being really nice to you to stop further damage. Our bodies don't know it's trying to keep us safe. What we must know from watching this now is that our body has always tried to support us. So if you were thinking that my body's stupid, my body doesn't know, I want a new body, I'm going to ask you to change your thoughts now into actually the amount of stress in my life has been so, so, so much that my body had to hold me into fight flight to protect me. It did what it needed to do to protect me as of now because now I understand it. With that, what you want to be looking at right now to start healing, and for those of you too, in the online healing school, we're looking at the stressors. The stressors that you have in your life, the physical stress, the chemical stress, and the emotional stress. So now's a good time to really think about what stress can I start to reduce or eliminate in my life? Writing that down, writing down a list of physical stress from the past and physical stress in your life now. Chemical stress that's been in the past and chemical stress now. And emotional stress in the past and emotional stress now. And writing that down to look at what can I start ticking off. If I'm drinking six coffees a day, maybe I'll drink four. If I've got a really stressful relationship at work, you know, how long do I want to be in this place? What can I do differently? You can't continue to know that your body's holding on to stress. You're in fight flight and do the same thing. For me to help you with healing, we're partners. We need to do this together. And how we do that together is by you really looking at what can I look at every single week in the online healing school. We're going to do this together where you can start to reduce and eliminate the stress in your life one by one, and I'm here to support you to do that. How you know if your body's in fight flight is we do an assessment, and I'm gonna show you how we do that. So this is what we look at doing. So I'm going to get, you can do this at home as well. So by putting your hands up front like that, and we're going to get you to close your eyes, and very, very, very slowly walking heel to toe, that's it, that's it, thank you. And that gives you an indication of what's happening in your body. Hands are gonna be straight out forward, eyes are gonna be shut, walking heel to toe very slowly to see how many steps that you get. If your body is moving more, if you can do more than six steps, it shows that your body is doing okay. If there's less than six steps and there's some wobbling, it's an indication that your body's in fight flight. And what do we do? We start to look at why. Why is my body in fight flight? What's happening in my life and what do I need to change to move it more into a rest, digest, parasympathetic healing state? As we move up the spine from the base gateway, we're having a look at the foundation gateway. So have a feel of your foundation gateway. Put the dimples on your bum. Holding the dimples of your bum, that's the foundation gateway. The foundation gateway comprises of sacrum, 
We've got the ilium through here. We've got the whole pelvic girdle and the whole ischium as well. This is the whole foundation gateway. The foundation gateway is the number one cause of back pain. Back pain, sciatica, pain into your bum, pain into the groin, hamstring, pain into your knees, pain into your feet. Anything that's radiating from there comes from a blockage in the foundation gateway. The most common cause of a blockage in the foundation gateway is repetitive bending and twisting. Bending, twisting, bending, twisting, because when you bend and twist, what happens is the fibres between the sacrum and the ilium, you've got microfibres in here, and when you continuously bend and twist, we tear some of the microfibres through here. You might tear some of them, tear some of them, and you might not even know, and that last tissue that you go to pick up, you go, ah, oh, I've got it, you know, there's a problem with my back. It wasn't the tissue, it was the continuous bending and twisting, bending and twisting that created that through here. And what it does, a blockage feels like inflammation. So if you can imagine having a inflamed, swollen ankle, and if you've got a swollen ankle and you stand on it, it's, you can't stand on it. It's no different to here. What happens when there's a blockage in the foundation gateway it looks like a sprain or strain. And what happens is we've got about 68% of our body weight that comes through this joint. And every time you take a step, the vibration comes from your feet to your knee into this joint as well. So it's quite hard to heal this joint once it's blocked through there. So again, if you're feeling like that you have got back pain sciatica, I'd like you to do this foundation gateway assessment to see what's going on. The other thing to know is that when we have a baby, the ligaments through here, they turn into elastin. And they turn into elastin to open up the canal, the pelvic girdle, to open that up for the baby to come out. When it turns into elastin and opens up, it means that the ligaments aren't being ligaments, they're being elastic. And then many of us and many people that I work with, years later after their babies, they're going, well, I've got this pain and I don't know why. What happens is the, the pelvis is turned to elastin and they continue to bend and twist, pick up the baby, sweep, mop, do the things that we do on a pelvis that we thought was supported, but it's not, it's elastic. So really to having a look at your foundation gateway. In my experience, if it's a purely physical cause, it corrects quite easily. If it's there for a little bit longer, what it shows me is that there's perhaps more of an emotional metaphysical component to it. And what that looks like is as we're trying to move forward, one side moving forward and the other side's holding back. So my question to you is if you've got a back pain or you've got sciatica or leg pain that's not healing, is there something in your life that's holding you back? Are you trying to move forward but there's something holding you back? To have a look at that. Is there a choice that you need to make? Is there a reason that you're stuck in the past? There'll be something for you to have a look there. How we assess the foundation gateway is like this. So what we do is we put one hand through here. So we've got one hand here on the foundation gateway, one hand there, and I'm just going to ask you to bend forward and have a look at my hands. What happens there is my hands have separated one side higher than the other. Thank you, Kendall. So what you can do, that's a hard assessment to do on your own at home, but get someone else to do that and say, have a feel it, I want to see what's going on and just to see what's happening with your foundation gateway. And that what you can do to help heal it is movement. If there's stuckness through there, we want to make sure you're moving. We want to make sure that you're moving a minimum of 20 minutes a day. For those of you in my healing school that are going to join me, we do the spinal flow routine where you lie on the blocks every single day for 10 minutes to bring the energy into the foundation gateway so we can move it through your spine as well. We want to do a posture audit. What does my day look like? If I'm bending and twisting and bending and twisting a hundred times a day and saying, hey, I've got a rotation in my pelvis, that's not going to help you. So have a think about how do I sit? Have I got one leg crossed? Is my pelvis balanced? 
And the other thing is do a movement audit. Like what's happening? What am I, mo am I moving in the day? We're designed to move. We're designed to be in a full flexion and extension. When we're in flexion and extension, our spine moves. If we're just one movement because we're brushing our teeth, we're eating breakfast, we're getting in the car, we're sitting on the computer and we're spending all of our day in forward flexion, we're one way and we're stuck. We want to be moving both ways. So have a look and think about what movement you're doing and make a choice now that I will move every single day. A minimum of 12 minutes, 20 minutes, because it's important for my posture and my health. The shape, tone and position of your spine reflects the shape, tone, position of your life. If there's flexibility and softness in your spine, there's flexibility and softness in your life. If there's openness and movement in your spine, there's openness and movement in your life. Be thinking about your spine the whole time because the more movement and the more openness there is in your spine, the more movement and openness in your life. If there's stuckness and closeness in your spine, that's what's happening in your life. It's my biggest mission, greatest purpose is to educate people about their spine because your spine, the spinal column is what houses your brain and spinal cord. And the health of the spine and the nervous system determines the health of your body. So that's why I speak about the spine all the time. As we move up, let's go up to the power gateway. One hand on your tummy, one hand on your lumbar spine. This is the power gateway. It's where the lumbar vertebra are. So you can see here, this is the lumbar vertebra through here. It's the power gateway. This is the area where I can feel what you're eating. <laughs> it's the area, it's the digestion, digestive system area. It's, if there's hardness through here, often I can feel if people are constipated or they've got diarrhea or they've got irritable bowel, I can see how their digestive system is working based on what I feel in the lumbar spine, in the power gateway. The lumbar spine holds chemical tone. The, the foundation gateway is mainly physical and the base gateway is mainly emotional. So this is where our chemical toxins store. So we really want to have a look at how are we nourishing our body? Are we flooding our body full of nutrition? Great fruits, great vegetables. Are we putting good, good whole food supplements in our body? Are we drinking water? Are we cleansing our body regularly? As part of the online healing school, we do three cleanses with you guys every single year. In January, we do a juice cleanse. In May, we do a colon cleanse. And in September, we do a liver cleanse. And that gives you time to connect into your body, flood it, remember to be looking after it, flood it with nutrients, but also to feel any store or stuck emotions that are beating there because by cleansing, it really brings that up. So that's my recommendation too. I also recommend for my clients, especially my online healing school, to avoid dairy, sugar, gluten, and any types of caffeine, um, smoking, any types of toxins that you guys know about, but the main ones I choose are the dairy, the gluten, and the sugar, because I know that the gluten is storing in the lumbar spine, in the power gateway, I can feel it. I can feel the dairy getting clogged in the passion gateway. And for me, when people work with me, they work with me because they want to heal. And so my thing is, if we can heal in the fastest, quickest way, let's remove that, add water, add great whole foods, get some good supplements into you so your body's healing. So that's the power gateway. How we assess the power gateway is we, can, we just want to move our lumbar spine. So we're going to move the left-hand side all the way down through here. Nice one. And then the right side all the way down here. If there's more movement to one side, you can assume there's a blockage. Or if there's pain on one side, you can assume there's a blockage as well. So that's how we assess the lumbar spine, which is a power gateway. As we move up, we're coming to our heart. Center gateway, put your hand on your heart. That's it. So this is our heart. This is our thoracic spine. This is actually... The first place when I work with my clients, with you guys on programs, is this is the first place where the blockages get stored. Those emotional blockages that couldn't be felt, couldn't be expressed, our trauma that happened as a little girl, little boy, got stored in the thoracic spine. 
What happens is when it gets stored in the thoracic spine, the thoracic spine either creates a little bit of a kyphosis, so that forward movement of the spine. That forward movement of the spine, the kyphosis, means that what's happening is it's hiding the heart. It's like I need to hide my heart because it's too much. So when we have that kyphosis, the heart gets hidden and what happens is the shoulders start to come up. And when I feel people's shoulders, I'm like, you know what, you're taking on the stress of the world. It's the typical empath posture. I'm going to hide me to look after everybody else. I'm hiding my own heart. I'm taking on everybody else's stress. And what happens is around this spine creates hardness through here. Now, if you have a look at if there's hardness in your spine through here, in the thoracic spine, it means because it's hard and it's not soft and it's not flexible, it's no longer weight bearing how it needs to weight bear. So therefore what happens is the power gateway, the lumbar spine, starts to compensate. So what happens is it's like, you know what, I would normally weight bear here, I can't. So what happens is the exact matching spot in the lumbar spine says, you know what, I'm going to help her out and I'm going to weight bear here. When this happens there, this creates blockage, digestive issues into here because it's the power gateway. And many people walk around looking for the diet, the food, what's happening, why their digestive system is not work, working because of a secondary compensation. The primary is up here in the heart where the emotions are. So again, by helping through here, releasing the emotions in this thoracic spine, we clear that so the power gateway, the lumbar spine, doesn't need to compensate and store. The other way we can have a blockage in this area is a sideways curve. A sideways curve is a scoliosis. When there's a scoliosis, it comes on more because it's like we're, as opposed to hiding the heart, we're protecting. There's been something that's happened in our life that didn't feel safe and we needed to protect ourselves from that. When we protect ourselves from that, what happens is because it's a sideways curve, the ribs come out and create a cage around the heart. And it's like we feel like, okay, the heart is protected until a time when we can go back in there and feel, express and release the emotions that came up. What happens is in many of our lives, we don't release those emotions. We don't know how, and we haven't been given the tools to, so we're walking around with a cage around our heart. And again, if there's a cage around here with a scoliosis, the lumbar spine, the power gateway, is compensating. It's saying, you know what, I'll help out, I'll do all the work, which again is interfering not only with our digestive system, but our hormonal system, because we can feel it in the same area here. So with the heart as well, you know, the biggest thing is right now, the amount of stress in our life, the amount of business in our life, it's not conducive for our bodies at all, but also not for our hearts. So I like, you know, for you guys and also in my online healing school is that we set time, a minimum of 10 minutes every single day to prioritize ourselves for love, for self-love, working out what is it that I love to do and making sure that's a priority. For really knowing, you know, the love languages, Gary Chapman's love languages and making sure that you're filling up your own love tank because we want to open up this centre gateway. Many of us, it's been hidden, it's been stuck and as long as there's blockage through here, the communication from the brain is not getting down to the body. How we can assess if there's a blockage in the centre gateway is having a look at breath. So I'll get you to breathe through here and I'm just seeing if there's expansion. I'm looking to see, thank you, if there's an expansion and my hands come out, I'm looking at around about six centimetres to come through and that shows me that there's openness through here in the centre gateway. And for you guys, when you're watching this, for you to realise, you know, what's happened to me? You know, what emotional stressors have I stored in my body? What's happened in my life? What's happened that perhaps I couldn't process that I've stored to the back of my mind in the centre gateway? Have a look and feel of that because you've probably been holding on to it and walking around this in life. Remember that we come out as a little bubba. The bubba's soft, the bubba's flexible, the baby's got this flowing, beautiful spine, 
And as soon as it starts to get a little bit older, it starts to become conditioned. Don't do that. Feel this. Don't feel that. Know this. Don't act like that. Don't express. Cry. Don't cry. And what's happening is we're putting boundaries on this freedom of a little baby. And what happens is after, for many of us, 5, 10, 15, 20, 40 years of hearing what to do, what not to do, what behave to do, we start to become quite stuck and confused too. And our hearts really start to hide away or become protected because all we wanted was to be loved. That's why we've come into this world. We are just pure love, but there's so many ways we need to be living in this world. So take time as well today to connect into your heart. You know, are you living life with according to your heart? Or is life happening for you? Which parts are coming up through here for the mind and which parts of you are truly able to express through your heart? So moving up into the Passion Gateway, put your hands through here. Passion Gateway, it's a throat area. It's a lower cervical spine. The Passion Gateway is the area of communication. It's also the throat area, thyroid. These nerves come out to the shoulders, to the elbows, to the hands. And when there's a blockage through here, it's like we were not able to express what we needed to express. You know when you go into, you might be sitting at your office and someone tells you some really bad news. Somebody's passed away. And you can feel yourself welling up and you're about to have a cry or emotions are about to come up, but then you remember, I've got a meeting. So you swallow it. I can't cry now. I've got to go to this meeting. I'm going to feel it later. You do your meeting. Then you're about to get home and you can feel the emotions again. But the kids come in and say, hey, mum, how are you going? You're like, I'll swallow that again. And what happens is we start to get into a pattern of swallowing our emotions as opposed to expressing them. And they start to get stored here in the Passion Gateway. And when they get stored in the Passion Gateway, they create stuckness through here. This is also the start of the digestive system. So if you look at the digestive system, it starts here in the Passion Gateway the lower cervical spine, the esophagus. So you can be putting foods in here and feel like you're somebody that gets sick often, that gets allergies, that has um, you know, inflammation or sinus stuff going on or phlegm through here. And you might think it's this food or that, that food, but the opportunity to explore deeper and say, well, actually, is it because... You know, as a child, I was told not to speak, not to express. I've held all of this in, and all I notice is the food's not getting through, and I thought it was a food, but perhaps it because I wasn't able to express. So really look at, for you, what is there that needs to be expressed and work out a way to get that out. It's super important. And with the Passion Gateway, it's important to know what you're passionate about, what your values are, what your purpose is. And we do that on my online healing school. So the online school healing school is the online membership where every single month there's challenges in there. And every month we go through a different challenge. We've got posture challenges, we've got expression, we've got purpose, we've got connection, we've got values, we've got cleansers to help support you onto your healing journey so you can understand more, inquire, but be motivated with a group of people so we're moving together towards greater health and healing. So let's um, assess the passion gateway. Next time I'll choose someone that's shorter than me. Okay, so right ear to right shoulder and left ear to left shoulder. So that's what we're doing, the movement. And this is one that you can do on your own at home. You can actually just see what's happening with my passion gateway. Is there more movement to one side? Is there more movement to the other side? Or is there some stuckness and rotation? That's going to give you an idea what's happening in your passion gateway. If you think about that we're assessing the passion gateway, lateral bending, because we're looking at the lower cervical spine. So moving up, pause gateway right at the top. Have a feel of the pause gateway. It's the C1 vertebra right at the top. So if you have a look at the spine through here, you've got the cranium here, you've got the C1 through here. When there's a blockage in this C1, the message from the brain does not get to the rest of the body. This is the biggest, most biggest thing that I worked out when I was working as a full chiropractor that it doesn't matter what people come to see me. If they come and see me with back pain or knee pain or digestive issues and I don't help 
this blockage in the C1, the message from the mouth of headaches, migraines, tiredness, fatigue, they have you know, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, they're feeling like they're not quite right, they're waking up in the morning and going, you know what, I feel like I should be okay because I slept, but I'm not okay, there's something not right. And what I've really noticed is that when there's a blockage in this area, the messages from the brain don't get through. So a lot of these people are walking around just as their head and not connected to their body. It's like a tap and a hose. If this was the tap and you turn the tap on and this is the hose that comes and someone comes and stands on the hose like here, the water's not coming down. It's getting blocked. And as long as it's getting blocked, it's like it's choking your brain and your nervous system. So for healing to happen, we really want to get to this C1 and help remove blockages there. This is the biggest thing that I do with the spinal flow technique, which is to work on C1 to remove blockages in the spine. The other thing to know is that the most common blockage in C1 is from our, our thoughts, our self-talk, what's happening in our mind, the amount of stress in our lives and our minds that is making our heads explode. It's like our heads are exploding so much that they're coming forward into the future. When I see someone with a blockage in C1, it's like the posture of the head is quite forward as opposed to here. It's like they're in the future, but their body is back here. So again, we're looking at a vertebra that needs to move like that. That's the movement of the C1 vertebra. When it's stuck, there's a blockage there and it will affect the whole nervous system. So we'll have a look at what, how we assess that. How we assess the pause gateway is turning your head all the way to the right and then all the way to the left. And if you've got one, move, one side that's moving more than the other or there's any pain there that you can assume there's a blockage in there. So again, this is an indication for you of how to assess your gateways, how to understand your body, and really from watching this to be really committed to go, you know what, I want to understand my body more. I want to become an expert in my body. And how you can do that is through your gateways, understanding what's going on. I feel this pain, I feel this symptom. The first thing I want to do is locate it you know what, I'm going to do these gateways assessments. I'm going to do it, I'm going to watch it again, I'm going to do these gateway assessments to work out where is it blocked. And then I'm going to ask myself, why? What's the cause? Ah, okay, accumulation of stress. Is it physical? Is it chemical? Is it emotional? Is it a combination? What can I do? Okay, I can start to reduce and eliminate some of these stressors. As I do that, I can start to move towards greater healing. And that's what I'm going to support you guys with in the online healing school. Daily check-ins, monthly challenges, weekly accountability. What are we going to do? Which, you know, which stress are we eliminating? That way you can start to be in a real partnership with your healing. It doesn't work anymore to say, i got a problem and you need to fix my problem. For me, it's not like that. It's like, I've got a problem. I'm like, great, I want to help you, but can we work together? Because you must know, I know that healing happens. You know, I know that. I've worked with people that heal forever, my whole life. But I know that it's a partnership. And it takes you guys as well to really know and look at if I continue to do the same thing that I've done that got me in this place, how can I expect a different outcome? You might expect a different outcome for a day, a week, a year, but not long term. So the commitment really is to say, yes, I'm prepared to do the work. I'm prepared to prioritize myself and do what it takes to heal. So every single day, I'm making a choice to move towards greater healing. And we do that in community. When we do it community and we do it together, it's easier. So that's just going through the gateways that I wanted to explain to you. Does anybody have any questions on that? Yes. Could you show, you know, the first thing you did with putting hands on the hip at back? Yeah. The test we have to do. Could you show it on that, please? Yeah. Because you did it on her. Yeah. But I can't see. Where you can't the see where the bones are. are. So can, can you hold my person? bit hard for me to do on this person. This person doesn't move like Kendall. So it's here. So this is a sacroiliac joint here. 
This is the sacrum through here, and where the sacrum meets the iliac is called the sacroiliac joint. Where it is in your body is the dimples in your bum. So what I'm doing is I'm putting one hand here, and I'm putting one hand there on both sides, right where the dimple is in the bum. And so as I do that, you can't do it on yourself, you have to do it on somebody else. And as I do that, I'm asking them to bend forward. And because that is bending forward, it shows me if it's moving together or if it's moving separately. If it's not moving together, it's blocked and one side will come higher. You do it for someone else, get someone else to do it to you. Yeah. Is it L5 or L5? It's, it's S1. So L5 is here. That's L5, and where the sacrum, where the sacroiliac joint is, is actually S2. S2. Yeah, S1 at the top, S2 there, exactly at S2, would be the sacroiliac joint. Yeah, good questions. Anyone else got any questions? Yes. We've got some mic buzz. It's the combination, so it's the bending and the twisting. So what happens is we want to keep our body in balance. So when we bend and twist, it, the body hates it. It tears the microfibers between that joint. So it's that bending and twisting at the same time. And that's why I say it's that movement like mopping, vacuuming, dishwasher. It's kind of bending. You know what my people do? They do this, like one foot there. If you want to get down, Bend your knees and get down balance. The other thing which is really good to do for you guys, this is so, so important, is think about what you're doing. Like, I'm pretty clever about when I do stuff where I put it. So think about where you put things. So you've got a choice right now. You come in and you've got a wallet. You've got a choice to put it down here on the floor or I could put it here. So the idea is you want to start to prepare. So I would put it here because it doesn't involve any bending, twisting. So have a look at your surroundings. You'll notice that in your daily life, you're constantly doing something that you probably could avoid as well. And, and also with kids too, like so many of us, when we picked up our kids, we kind of picked them up like that, grab them on a hip, that's bending, twisting, and then it's rotations through there. And how can, like, you know, I started to hold my kids like this. I would hold them here with their bum here and their feet on both sides so it was more balanced. And so I just started to modify what we're doing. But when I watched mums and dads, I was like, you know, this is full on. It's a lot of bending, twisting. And you can see what type of work you do. Like for me, as a healer, I'm working constantly like that. It's the same thing. So I might not be at a computer all day, but I'm still bending, twisting. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still bending and twisting in that position that the pelvis doesn't like. The pelvis wants to be balanced. Good question. Those, yes. Those Are we do the so a great question. What about awaken? <laughs> Thank you. Awaken is up here. So awaken is in the cranium, and awaken is a combination of all of them. So when the body works together, when all of the other gateways are open, awaken is open. There's no test at all. If there's a blockage in one gateway, there's a blockage in awaken. Awaken is when we've got that wave, the spinal wave that comes through the body that we're looking to do with spinal flow technique shows me that awaken is open. Awaken is awakening, pure connection. When there's full movement and flow through the body, any gateway that's closed is going to interfere with the movement, with the flow through the breath, and therefore it, it's the same as awaken. But I'm glad um, that you mentioned it, so we are complete. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Awesome. Okay, cool.